Live NFL trivia every Tuesday night on Twitch at 9 p.m. Eastern. Come show off your football knowledge and have a chance to win cash prizes. Check the link in the description to find out more. And now, on with our feature presentation. There have been tens of thousands of kickoffs in the history of the NFL. Comes. You have the kickoffs that are just touchbacks out of the back of the end zone. You have kickoffs where absolutely bizarre stuff happens, for better or worse. You have kickoffs where teams turn the ball over. You have kickoffs that go for touchdowns. And as was the case in the Steelers game in 1990, you have kickoffs where the other team just forgets to touch the ball. You can check out the video I made about that play in the upper right corner. With so many kickoffs in NFL history, it's hard to narrow it down and pick out the strangest kickoff ever. But I might have found it. A kickoff so bizarre that nothing like it has happened since and is unlikely to ever happen again. A kickoff so bizarre that it sparked a league-wide controversy about the sport and the media. In the opening game of the 1983 season between the New York Jets and the San Diego Chargers, on one of the kickoffs, absolute chaos ensued. This is the story behind the strangest kickoff in NFL history. First, we need some context before the play is shown. It's September 4th, 1983, and it's opening day for the San Diego Chargers and the New York Jets. Opening day is always exciting, and this game was the marquee attraction. The Jets were 6-3 the year before, making it to the AFC Championship before losing to the Miami Dolphins. The Chargers went 6-3 the year before as well, making it to the second round before losing to the Miami Dolphins. Outside of the Dallas Cowboys, these two teams had the best preseason odds of winning Super Bowl 18. And there was only one other game airing at 4 o'clock. Basically, if you were a football fan in 1983, you were watching this game on NBC. This was the game of all games to start the year off. It starts off with Rolf Benershka having one of the worst field goal attempts I've ever seen. I've got nothing for how this kick is so bad. But after that awful kick, the scoring picks up. Chuck Muncy punches it in from a yard out to give the Chargers the first points of the game as they take a 7-0 lead at the end of the first quarter. The Jets respond by scoring 13 unanswered to take a 13-7 lead into the halftime break, including a 26-yard pass by Richard Todd to Wesley Walker. Rolf Benershka redeems himself with a chip shot 23-yard field goal, but the Jets answer with a 9-yard run by Freeman McNeil. Suddenly, this is a pretty high-scoring game. When Chuck Muncy runs it in from two yards out, the Chargers now trail 20-16 at the end of three quarters. The team's trade touchdowns to start off the fourth, with Wayne Crutchfield scoring from a yard out for the Jets, and Bobby Duckworth scoring from 29 yards out for the Chargers. And that takes us to the playing question. The Chargers trail this one 27-22. Get a stop here, and you can put yourselves in a perfect position to get back into the game. San Diego's been struggling a bit with their kickoff coverage. On their previous three kickoffs, the Jets made it out past the 25-yard line. Especially since back then, a touchback only got the ball out to the 20, this was a pretty big deal. If the Chargers could pin the Jets deep and make them start the drive inside the 20, that would be big. And sure enough, that's exactly what happens. Kirk Springs gets stopped around the 10-yard line. The Jets are pinned back, and it looks like they're about to start the drive from deep in their own territory. Except the kickoff didn't count. This whole play never happened. Not because there was a penalty on either team. Not because there was an inadvertent whistle. Not because there was a timeout called or anything like that. Turns out, the kick didn't count because NBC was still in a commercial break. When NBC came back to the Jets Chargers game, they showed a highlight from the Packers Oilers game earlier in the day. Why they did this now and not at halftime, I don't know. And I have many questions about this highlight, since this was not the game winning or even the game tying score, and since the game was at 1 o'clock, meaning that the outcome was known already. But between the commercial break and this update, nobody got to see that kickoff. And because of that, the kick didn't count. You might be thinking to yourself that something like this happened at Super Bowl 1 with the opening kickoff of the second half. And to an extent, you're right. There are two major differences though. The first one is that the Super Bowl was being broadcast on two networks, so it's understandable, especially in 1967, why there would be some confusion since CBS was ready to go and NBC wasn't. The second and more important one for this context though, is that on that play, everyone stopped moving. The whistle blew before the ball was even caught. For this Chargers game, it was being broadcast on NBC and NBC only, and half of the players finished out the play. Nobody realized what happened until the play was over. The Chargers had struggled on special teams all day, with a few big returns allowed, two missed extra points, and a missed field goal. They finally get something right. 
And because of NBC, it never happened. And because of this, there was a re-kick. And on the re-kick, the Jets did this. So there's good, this one will count. It's a dying quail for the 12 at the 7 at spring. 30. Out in the open at the 40. Venerstian pursued at the 50. Springs all the way to the 30-yard line of San Diego. Kurt Springs. Three yards, and you get a very loud, roaring move from these fans who don't understand why it was called back. Instead of starting pin deep in their own territory, they were starting in field goal range. A few plays later, Freeman McNeil scores from 18 yards out to give the Jets a 34-22 lead, and they would eventually win the game 41-29. It was universally agreed upon afterward that the turning point was that botched kickoff. Oddly enough, Chargers special teams coach Mark Braden was fine with the whole ordeal, and he took it well. He said, I think about 65% of our revenues come from TV. So I think they should be in some position of power. Head coach Don Coryell, on the other hand, yeah, he didn't share the same thoughts. He said the opposite, saying that the second kick never should have happened and that he had never heard of such a thing. What exactly was the problem here? Why did the kickoff have to be redone? If you've ever been to an NFL game, you might notice a referee on the field with a red hat. He steps onto the field when the broadcast is in a commercial and steps off the field when the broadcast is live. This lets the referee know when to start and stop the game. The referee in the red hat stepped off the field since he got the go-ahead to do so. However, NBC was still in commercial, probably because they were showing a random highlight of a one o'clock game that they easily could have shown at halftime. Seriously, I can't get over that. Imagine if you missed a play in a Sunday night football game because the director felt that now would be a good time to show a random touchdown from one of the one o'clock games. Red Cashin was the referee here. And he was a two-time Super Bowl ref, so it's not like this was a bad ref. You might know him from his iconic first down calls. As for this play, his explanation for what happened here was simple. One ref thought that the ball was ready when it actually wasn't ready. When the ball was kicked, an official on the sideline realized this mistake and tried to stop the play. Then the re-kick happened. But as executive producer Michael Wiseman said, there was nothing in the rulebook that said that the play had to be redone. Wiseman said, there have been times where the referee put the ball in play while we were away on a commercial, and we've missed a play and had to do an instant replay when we came back. It's the referees who run the game. So who was at fault for this? You can blame NBC for having a commercial run long. You can blame the referees for not realizing that NBC was off the air. You can blame both parties equally. Either way, the Chargers lost this game. And though this wasn't the only reason why, it definitely didn't help. Neither team made the postseason, as the Jets finished 7-9 while the Chargers finished 6-10. So this play did not matter in the grand scheme of things. Still, to have something like this happen is definitely not ideal. There have been games played where there was no TV signal for a portion of it. The final seven or so minutes of the Jaguars-Chiefs game from 2019 was untelevised. The Bills and Chargers famously had a game that was untelevised for a long portion of it. And the Bills and Dolphins played a game earlier this season where the power went out in the truck and nobody could watch but they didn't stop the game or redo any of the plays. Here, this was not the case. If you thought the Chargers having bad luck on special teams was just a thing that's been happening for the past decade, think again. Even as far back as the 1980s, good fortune was not on their side. Be sure to like this video, ring the notification bell, subscribe down below if you haven't already as it helps the channel out a lot. And be sure to check out Twitch every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Eastern for your chance to play NFL trivia and my cash prizes. Link in the description below. If you want to see videos like this condensed down to 60 seconds, then follow me on TikTok at JaroGator9 and subscribe to 60 Second NFL History on YouTube. Also, special thanks to all of our Patreon supporters for helping with the channel. Your support is greatly appreciated. So you can become a patron and request future video topics in the description below.